I'm going to talk about two things today. One is knowledge and why consent uh, or moral is a, is a part of will, what Nati already started uh, debating. And secondly, I'm going to talk about imposing will and why even if there are outside moral forces, imposing will against my consent is morally reprehensible. So at least in that respect, consent has a moral value, as in denying it has a negative moral value. I'm going to rebut some things that I heard uh, uh, from Mila. So basically she told us that the, the less people are involved in the decisions about their morality, or the less, the, the more uh, outside forces impose morality, uh, the less moral society is, or the, more, the less morals that we have, we absolutely agree. What they're offering is a model under which no one can make a moral decision. No outside force can make a, a, a moral decision because no one has the will to make a moral decision. Under they, their model, no one can make a moral decision. That is a situation that is immoral the way, to, to, to our thinking. More than that, basically they're talking about society and individuals and it was a bit uh, confused though. Um, we have basically two situations. One, we're talking about our consented moral decisions better than unconsented moral decisions, and B, as a society, how do we select values? Nati has done a good job of showing you how as a society we uh, select values. We want to make clear the second prop that uh, in the POI brought it up. Having a social contract that it, I did not actively consent to does not mean that there is no consent or that the moral system is not based on consent. It is just a system under which will is given in a different way. The basis is consent, but we do it in a mechanism that allows to maximize will. That is a situation where we win, where not his case wins. Furthermore, um, okay, I'm going to, uh, oh yes, uh, uh, outside forces to decisions, I just wanted to do this uh, uh, quite clearly. Um, most decisions, maybe every decision has outside forces. If you look at prostitution, Yes, probably everyone who chooses prostitution had, makes a bad moral decision or ba bad moral call or at least something that is harmful to themselves. It doesn't mean that it is necessarily against their consent or against their will. We do accept that there is a limited consent. There is consent that is based on false information and consent that is based on good information. These are two moral situations. Both are better than imposing it on her. If we, ch we force her to do it, if not by convincing her that this is something that she wants, but force her to do it, this is even worse. And this is my second point. I'm going to move into my first point, which is basically knowledge. Um, basically, uh, it does told us that there is an objective perspective that is, you know, not human probably, because humans always make mistakes, that knows better uh, about my society, knows better about my values and so on. What we're saying to this is A, look at colonialism. When we had an outside perspective, it tended to be bad to the society that you try to inspect, the moral values that imported to these societies tended to be extremely violent and extremely bad for these societies, and the fact that someone is from the outside does not necessarily mean that he, he seeks what's best for the society. Furthermore, he might not be aware, if we're talking about the society, he might not be aware of the goods and bad things in society. I do not think that there is absolutely nothing bad in African societies, but I can't name one thing that I think is good in African societies. I just don't know them well enough. No outside force generally will be able to do this. Furthermore, I know my interests best. This is kind of obvious, right? I know what I care about. Doesn't necessarily mean that I can bring them about more, most efficiently, but at least I know what I want. This is basic. There are two gaps in knowledge. One is that I might know not know reality well enough. I might make bad moral decisions because I do, just don't know the facts. If I see someone shooting from the top of a building, you know, someone standing with a sniper rifle, I might assume that he's a mad killer and kill him, and then it turns out that he was a police sniper or something like that, and I shouldn't have killed him. That is an, you know, an immoral act, but I do not ascribe any moral cost to that because I didn't know enough about the world, I didn't know enough to make this a moral call, a moral judgment. The second type of, of knowledge gap is if I don't know morals well enough. I live in a society that has different values. If I was exposed to other values, I might have adopted them, but I just don't know them well enough. In these two situations, uh, one second, Mila. In these two situations, A, I think that there is far less moral cost to killing someone without this knowledge, to committing cannibalism without being exposed to Western society. It means that consent has a large value, that knowing or understanding the cost of moral actions is extremely important in the way that we judge moral uh, uh, decisions. And more importantly than that, 
Um, oh, once again, okay. Um, when I don't understand more laws, when I didn't consent to more laws, and this is my second point, I, 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 imposing them on me is harmful to my will. And we think that having will is the basis for any moral decision. Yes. We believe that people who judge the situation are from inside of the society and not outside of the society, and thus they are perfect to do so. Well, first of all, this is not the case that you don't bought to the table here. Furthermore, we do not accept that unless this is based on consent. We might accept that it's, you know, if within society, some people agree to this, we change moral values within society, that is based on consent, this is the case that nobody brought to the table, and um, obviously not the pop case. Okay, the second point, and this is very important. Even if the outcome is more moral, even if we prevent the sniper, or even if, you know, whatever I do, um, uh, is the outcome is more moral, there are two main reasons that I don't want to impose moral values on people, not only because I might make a mistake, what the first point uh, uh, tried to show you, <coughs> furthermore, imposing is bad, because it does two things. First of all, it is using force, and we think that the basic definition of an immoral uh, uh, action is to use force against another individual, and we think that that is kind of obvious that this is immoral, but furthermore, it is denying will. We consider will to be the basis of any moral judgment. If you have no will, there is no moral judgment on you. If you have will, then if you do something wrong, then this is morally harmful. The case from first pop did not understand the importance of will to making a, 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 a decisions, and when they try to impose on me their own morality, what they're doing is basically denying me the basic right or the basic principle of any moral system, any system that, that deals with moral decisions, which is to make my own moral decisions. Even if the outcome is going to be you know, better for the world, there's going to be more resources, less people are going to die, whatever it is, it does not mean that they have the right to do it, because I have the right to make my moral decisions for myself, and denying that right is immoral in itself, and therefore the pop case falls. Thank you very much.